Oh, oh, oh. Bienvenue à ma nouvelle vidéo. Réaction de géographie now France. Okay. <laughs> I promise to never do that again. Uh, so yeah, what's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf, and holy hell, it is hot. Yeah. <laughs> There's no AC in my house. I don't have any sort of fan, nothing. It is just hot. And my room is like a freaking boiler room because the sun is just like right there where my room is when it sets. So uh, it becomes a, a pure sun. You just, I can just add like like some coals and some, you know, like one of those water, you know, ladle things. And I could literally just make a good, good business idea. A sauna in my room. That, this is why I'm naked, by the way. Also for the views, but <laughs> also, also because it's super hot. So anyway, French is the subject I studied in uh, college. For those of you who didn't know, don't ask why. I just did. I finished it. I got a job. And now I do YouTube. So <laughs> there, there's the entire story of that. So let's give this a shot. Why not, Paul? Go ahead. Comme certains d'entre vous le savent, en huitième de mois est français. Really? J'ai donc en quelque sorte en obligation de honorer mon héritage. T'es toi, putain. <laughs> Sorry, I called you a bitch, Paul. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbie. Ah, France. Pretty much everybody on the planet has heard of this place. I mean, immediately images of Pretty wine, much. cafes, embellished 18th century Baroque architecture, and people who really hate globalization of the English language. But take a step back, <laughs> even further, you gonna do, French? France becomes a place with jaguars, coconuts, volcanoes, penguins, grass skirts, war dances, bamboo flutes, witch doctors, and a multifaceted history that has oh, evolved. Oh, I thought it was talking about the metropolitan one of the most France. Notable nations on the planet. Alors, allons-y. Was that what? There's tribal people in metropolitan place. You know about France is that it's not know. just European, but a transcontinental country that spans across 12 times so more than any other country in the world. Mais comment est-ce que possible? Laissez-moi expliquer, gros garçon. France is kind of divided into two main I probably shouldn't parts, talk shit about the, the French while well, I hang on. Let me make sure my microphone is. Shouldn't talk shit about the French when doing a video on France. I know they're super. How should I say? Vanicious. Is there a word for like vanity? Vanicious? Van I don't know. They're, they're basically very prideful people, uh, which is fine, I guess. They do have a very wealthy history. Alongside the, the United States probably has one of the wealthiest histories in the world. I could just... I, the, the list goes on of how many great things they've done. But um, seriously, just... Can you calm the proudness level a little bit? Come on, just... Not to get on our nerves anymore. In France, where about 95% of the population lives, and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories, otherwise known as the Département et Territoires d'Outre-mer, or Dom. Really, that's how you read that? I would read that Département et Territoires d'Outre-mer. I don't want to read the damn R like a R. It's freaking R. Territoire. That's how we learned it in college, literally. They're like, eh, you don't have to read the R like that. Just read it like like a, a rolling R. So we, we actually read like département instead of uh, département. Tom. Before we tell you what oh they are, <laughs> let's explain the difference between them. Regions have exactly the same legal status as mainland France and the same civil, penal code, and administrative social tax laws. However, they can be slightly adapted to suit the region's particular needs. In collectivities, the autonomy rises and they are empowered to make their own laws except in certain areas like defense, currency, trade, and diplomacy. The overseas regions are Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French mm -hmm. Guyana in South America, which by the way has the Kuro Space Center, disputably the best in the world because it adds... <laughs> Disputably the best, but hang on, hang on. It remind, reminded me of uh, Couch, by the way, has the a certain game. It looks like Kerbal Space Program. Has anybody played that game? It looks exactly, well, I'm guessing a lot of uh, space shuttle uh, landing sites or takeoff sites. So it looks similar, but it looks exactly like that. It's like, yeah, or is it just me? Are disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra Kuro, this also sounds like Kerbal, doesn't it? Gravitational slingshot effect because it's so close to the equator of the Earth. And Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. The overseas collectivities are French Polynesia, no. Tahiti, that's French Polynesia, as well as Too much land. in the Pacific, <laughs> Saint Pierre and I'm Michelin, surprised the, right like, the uh, United States allowed them to, like, maintain a lot of that, uh, their territory. Well, they were historical friends, but, uh, in a 
some other different context, I'm pretty sure the United States would have jacked those islands from the Pacific. Canada, St. Barthélemy, and St. Martin, which is the only place in France that has a border with the Netherlands as the Dutch own the southern part of the island, located all in the Caribbean. The only islands that lie under the title of overseas territories are the French Southern and Antarctic Islands, or the TAAF. These islands are made up of the Cruellen Islands, the St. Paul and Amsterdam Islands, you can probably guess who used to own those, the Crozet <laughs> Islands, and Adelie It is said the Dutch are very good at discovering territories, but very bad at holding on to them. I mean, just actually French and the English and the, and the Americans. slice of Antarctica that is technically not recognized not the Americans, the Antarctic just English. Treaty. And as of 2007, the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands are mostly I doubt they're going to be able to temporary military jack them. <laughs> personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of the previously mentioned categories. There's the uninhabited Clipperton Island off the coast of Mexico, which has a crazy murder story behind it, and Last but not least, I look there's that up. New Caledonia, which has a special particular status ah, yeah. out of the French administered overseas. Uh, yeah, there was a referendum that was held a couple of months ago on the uh, secession of New Caledonia. It could have been another state in the um, in the world. So if it did actually, like, uh, I guess, split from, from France, the geography now would have to make a new video on all about New Caledonia. But, um, so, yeah, it didn't happen. They decided to remain part of France. And, uh, yeah, that, that that's it. That's that these territories. New Caledonia is the only one that's vying for a kind of somewhat independence as the political power one second. to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual French EU and New Caledonian citizenship cool flag, thing though. going on. It's like and a in totem 2018, in the middle. They will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, they together give France the second largest executive economic zone in the world after the US. Whew. You know, let's go back to metropolitan Europe, France. The country is located in Western Europe, bordered by eight other nation states. Don't forget little Andorra and Monaco. Along the coast I by didn't. the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay in the north and west, as well as the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon, since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks like it has six sides. Yeah. Quite frankly, I was always Pretty under much. the impression that it kind of looked like a teapot with feet. Mainland France is also <laughs> divided into 13 That's regions, cute. including Corsica Island, 18 altogether if you include the over... I don't know, I'm just checking out the map here. Okay. <laughs> regions with the capital, no commentary, city, just as checking well out the map. The main cultural and commercial center, Paris. We could Paris. talk on and on about Paris. What would... I don't know if he's going to mention about Paris, or Paris as we call it, Paris in French. Uh, comes from the Paris tribe that inhabited the island in the middle of the Seine River. Uh, it was known as the Paris tribe. They fought well against the Romans, and uh, basically Paris started like uh, forming around that uh, one island in the middle of the Seine is where the two rivers meet. I, I forgot the name of the rivers. And then it creates the Seine River. Uh, and uh, Paris was founded right on the confluence of all those rivers. With the unbelievably designed because metropolitan trade. layout, the rich, vibrant atmosphere, oh, yeah. the juxtaposition I gotta go of classically adorned historical sites along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, à minuit, il y a tout ce que vous... You, uh, forgot the P. <laughs> but that in itself will take too long. We gotta get through three more segments. The busiest airports are the two Charmin's Paris twins, Field. Charles de Gaulle and Orly International, as well as Nice, Côte d'Azur, and the second and third largest cities, Lyon, Saint-Exupéry, and Marseille, Provence International. At around 643,000 square kilometers, France is the largest country in the EU. The interesting thing about France is that it's kind of divided into areas that historically had their own distinct cultural identity. Some of the most notable ones being Occitania, Savoy, Brittany, Normandy, Alsace, a section of the Basque Country, Nice, and the island of Corsica, which speaks its well, own they dialect jacked a lot of French land. people can't even understand. These regions contribute their own unique piece of the French pie. Speaking of pie, we all know about French Napoleon's food, from is great Corsica. We're discuss more about it in... If you look at France's physical makeup, you start to kind of understand why food plays such a huge role in their culture. Everything just kind of works out perfectly for them. For metropolitan France, big, rich, nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the Garonne, Dordogne, Loire, Seine, Meuse, and Rhône entangle the entire country north to south, east to west, allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in nearly every corner of the country. Now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines. They enjoy a nice oceanic European climate and they don't suffer regularly from any major natural catastrophes. Most of the country is made up of arable flat plains the good and small rolling green hills that are just begging for cultivation and voila what do we got we got fucking hills and mountains barely any room to live and they're like oh you bosnians you don't know how to freaking uh develop your country shut the fuck up just look at bosnia on uh on a google maps and you'll see what's what's bosnia's problem 
Ah, you have an agricultural gold mine. In fact, out of every country in the EU, France reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience, and only a few spots like in the Caucasus region and parts of Eastern Europe and Southern Russia rank higher. So there you go, food haven. In the south, you reach the mountainous regions of France, including the Pyrenees along the border with Spain, the Massif Central Plateaus, one of the most geologically studied places in Europe due to this strange formation, the Alps all along the borders with Italy and Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland was all like, yeah, I'm not gonna share Lake Le Mans, it's mine. <laughs> That's how Geneva was born. The highest point in France, let alone all of the EU, is Mont Blanc, found in the French Alps along the border with Italy, only second in height to the Caucasus Mountains in all of Europe. If you consider the Caucasus region a part of Europe, some people don't. Yeah, that's why not? Just, that's another story. France is a cornucopia of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere, cheese and wine. The French are the largest consumers and of proud cheese people. with over <laughs> 1,200 different varieties found all over the country. The French also have a larger range of unconventionally consumed meat products. Most countries stick with beef, chicken, pork, maybe lamb or goat and fish. However, the French aren't satisfied with just that. Other animals oh, really? like pheasant, duck, goose, quail, rabbit, venison, Snail. veal, horse, frogs and snails are consumed regularly. Speaking of which, the national animal is the gallop. It is assumed that uh, the French started eating, I don't know how true the story is, but uh, during the, the, the Prussian siege of Paris, uh, where the Prussians have completely, you know, encapsulated Paris and there was a whole bunch of chaos and uh, hunger going around in Paris that they actually started eating anything they could find basically even zoo animals and yes snails which is uh, I don't know how true that is but um, kind of makes sense I guess and they said they liked them I guess or people ate them before who knows like rooster, which is why you might typically see a lot of roosters on French affiliated symbols. In fact, France is one of the most entomophagous Look at that escargot. countries in Europe, as about 700 million snails, snails are insects? estimated to be consumed every year by the French, especially in Burgundy, the largest snail producing region in France. Unfortunately, due to the wrong. fact that the French are the <laughs> highest consumers of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half the population is suspected to have. This little guy eventually finds its way into your brain changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious look it up i'm not even joking the alps are famous oh so for that's why they're and they're kind of dickheads for its crepes, cantal for its chestnuts dijon Makes for sense. its mustard la veyron for haricot creme for its champagne and then we get to bordeaux now first of all every region of france likes to claim that they have the best wine however it's widely known that bordeaux is disputably the home of the largest wine vineyards in the world pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year the french take their produce maintenance very seriously and became the first country in the world World to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food banks to combat crop wastage on farms. Mm, Francis even opened up ugly fruit or vegetable shops in which you can buy disfigured produce for 30% off. Other than foodstuffs though, main <laughs> exports are aircraft, chemicals, machinery, iron, and steel, electronics, nice. motor vehicles, and pharmaceuticals. Of course, the overseas territories and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different. The Caribbean islands and Guyana enjoy a warm, Caribbean tropical climate, Guyana being part of the Amazon, having one of the highest forest cover densities in the world at over 95%, with over 1,100 species of birds and reptiles and mammals found in it. Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of Africa have deep jungle ravines and a common volcanic activity. That is like the, the most beautiful. Scattered islands are mostly uninhabited, sandbanks and lagoons uh, with nothing more than just a few trees and shrubs. The southern Antarctic islands are rocky and desolate with few grasses and vegetation. Crewellen has these cabbage looking things going on. And these islands typically freeze over in the winter with penguins stampeding off the coasts. New Caledonia and French Polynesia are tropical Pacific islands that enjoy an abundance of rich, unspoiled, thick jungle brush and colorful flowers. And of course, Adelie Land is like all ice and Antarctica. All right, we've discussed borders, boundaries, mountains, food, volcanoes. Now let's talk about who's running the entire show. France is a country of people that are very, very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First of all, the country has about 67 million people and is the second largest in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are French black, instead and a little of white. less than 2% are Asian. The currency is the Euro, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road, which makes things interesting when their neighbors from the UK come across <laughs> the channel. Now let's talk about the white the people. Channel. Most white White French people have some or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions of modern day France. That means genetically the French and British have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an Isn't she Danish, the freaking actor, what's her name? 
forgot. <laughs> Admixture of Latin and Germanic roots also applies as all three people groups have their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is of course the official language, however, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part, they do pretty well at making sure everyone speaks it. Granted, the linguistic zones that we mentioned before each have their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find street signs written in these languages. For example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish found in Brittany, Basque in the Basque country, Occitan in Occitania. Corsicans have like this strange half pom. French, half Italian hybrid thing going on. Keep in mind though, most of the languages spoken in the linguistic zones are kind of dying out and only the older generation really retains daily conversation in those languages. Outside France of metropolitan wins. France, the overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition typically that have their cool own creoles or dialects. For example, in the Caribbean, Martinique and Guadeloupe might say, Sac a marché, tu bon man, tu mal man. In Reunion or Mayotte, they might say, Coiffe, comment il est, à où? France is the most visited country in the world, as more people than the yeah. entire population of France visit France annually at about 80 million. Culture-wise, there is Dude. too much to discuss. I mean, we are talking millennia of tribes. Croatia is like, hold empires, my beer. Heroes, villains, <laughs> arts, Vecchia. poets, architects, kings, queens, guillotines, revolutions, inventions, music, dance, clothing, fashion, cinema, cuisine, discoveries, victories, losses, folklore, science, literature, medicine, and baguettes. To cover it all, we would need a Especially whole separate baguettes. YouTube channel. But for what it's worth, some the fun Middle dude. Ages, France has been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned with. I mean, the French at one point in time had the second largest empire in the world, spanning across virtually every region on every continent. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing anglophone oh, those global tits. economy, France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has oh, yeah. aimed at doing Francaise. this since 1634. They do things like, somewhat unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, parking, email, Why? and weekend. In addition, the French media's top regulators, the CSA and CNC, have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French language between the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and half the music quota must be less than six months old. Everything must be French. France is, of course, home to a plethora <laughs> of notable figures wow. in every field of academia and athleticism. I mean, they have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemists Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. Other scientists, writers, and philosophers they also like won the Descartes, World, World Pascal, Cup. Baudelaire, Flaubert, Pasteur, mm -hmm. Châtelet, Bouton, who, by the way, invented the metric system. Musicians like Ramelot, which Louis, we all should Lucy, be using Jacques America. Ben, Edith Piaf. Of course, we can't forget the fashion icons Louis Vuitton, Coco Chanel, and Christine Duart. I mean, it's I know, no like secret, France is often <laughs> touted as the fashion capital of the world. Artists like Monet, Cézanne, Renoir, Degas, Manet, and Gauguin. And of course, what's an episode about France without mentioning anything about kings Louis the 14th and 16th, Joan of Arc, and Napoleon? In a simple way of putting it, French culture is very vibrant and proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. The Catholic Church once played a major role and to this day... Rest in peace, Notre Dame. We all know what happened. Even as a secular state with dwindling church attendees, many French people still, in the very least, identify nominally as Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history and they don't want to toss it away. They also love taking breaks and getting their sleep. On average, the French get about 8.83 hours of sleep every day, more than any other country in the developed world. And they also have some <laughs> of the shortest work weeks with only about six to seven hours on average a day. And that's enough for them. It's not uncommon to see people taking time off in the middle of the day, early evening, just to relax and take a nap. They even have a word for it. We work for like 10 Lago, hours a day. Which literally translates to the hour of the aperitif. People can also claim state pension at age 62, making it one of the lowest retirement ages in the world. And of course, the sport French people rank highest in the world going on strike. I mean, the last thing you want to do is interrupt a Frenchman's nap during a six-hour shift with corporate policy changes. Yep, the world can be a cruel, cruel place. Let's see how France survives in the jungle. <laughs> As like some of the highest centers of living in the world, and it's France, like, they, don't they still protest. They hate everyone equally. No, but seriously, France has their eyes on a few people, and when they that see what they good. like, they cling on and You can't hate us Bosnians, treasure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former you Roman just want all your good nations jobs. generally get the good. high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they love making fun of each other even more, even though they are really close. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia are the closest African nations as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, followed by sub-Saharan African countries.
countries like Cameroon and Cote d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, oh, that's true. like castles, attire, and food. Likewise, Japan anime. sort of shares the same the anime? fascination and see France as like its European alternate universe twin. There's no two I countries that have like, like a poke fun of and borderline psychological each other disorder the where they the think and the USA. As historical rivals, like the Japanese word when they think that uh, that France is not the best place in the world, they break down and like they have like a mental breakdown. There's like an actual word for that. Can't believe it. With the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred year war with them, and the USA busting their chops about World War II all the time. All sides like to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK and France have been crossing borders and intermarrying for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high. Nigel and the Farage. US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War, and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. So, fellow Americans, thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? It was a kind gesture. France's best friends, though, How much would did it cost? Be Germany and Belgium. It's kind of funny because historically the only French fries or Belgian fries an opponent of France was Germany ever since the split of Charlemagne's Empire in three most of Europe's history was driven by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany including the Holy Roman Empire the Teutonic Order Prussia and of course the Third Reich but the plot twist was the creation of the EU following Robert Schumann's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work the millennia old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good ever since 1950 France and Germany have taken a lot of so they can try to control Europe each together. Other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous <laughs> occasions, and both countries I'm, I'm have calling been you the out. biggest advocates for the survival <laughs> nah, of the you're, union. You're and Belgium is like their little brother that moved oh, out. We'll take a good job. Thank you. <laughs> visits France every so often to raid their fridge and do their laundry. In conclusion, the Français sont connus pour être intrépides, turbulents, mais qui gardent quand même un certain charme. Ils ont parfois l'air désinvolus, mais bon, essayez de vivre dans un pays envahi 24 sur 24, 7 jours sur 7, par des hordes de terroristes qui piètent. In vos jardins, massacre votre gastronomie, et vous demandez de vous plaire au moindre de leurs désirs sans même vous dire un petit merci. Oh, France, faut le comprendre. Stay tuned. Merci, France's rich former français. little colony, Gabon, is coming up next. Okay, Gabon coming up next. Uh, I was like wondering, like last episode, what was it going to be the next episode, but uh, apparently it's Gabon. All right, now flag. Hey, Jacques Peeps, France is such a fun episode to film. A few side notes. Jacques Blau was actually Belgian. Marie Curie, although naturalized as a French citizen, was actually Polish. Polish. I totally butchered Christian Dior's last name, and in the demographics graph it said 5% instead of 3% for the black population. However, some people argue that sure? the actual numbers could actually be more than 5%, so I guess it kind of works out. Anyway, France has a lot when it comes to symbolism, and we have so much to discuss. Like, so, all, like further, all their I football do. players are... Like 50% of their football players are black. <laughs> Now, the French flag may They're only have three colors, but there's a lot of backstory in how it became that way. First of all, the flag is a tricolor flag of three vertical bands of blue, white, and red. Now, there are many interpretations behind these colors. However, what we can start with is the fact that blue, white, and red are generally associated with republicanism or democracy. Basically, the they stole it from the conflict. Dutch. Long story short, the French Revolution. But before we even get into that, pre-revolution France used a lot of white. It was a very popular color. They loved it. It all started with Joan of Arc and then made popular by kings in the 16th. One time it was a completely white flag. Not even joking. Look it up. Century, as it was kind of seen as like a reconciliation color between <laughs> there it is. I waited one second. For the longest time, they were under the white Again. royal fleur de lis flag. The colors red and blue are based off of the flags of Paris, which are based off of the two saints. Blue for Saint That's Martin, also the Bishop color of Tour, who had some story about him sharing part of his cloak with a beggar. Canto. Red for martyr Saint Denis, Bishop of Paris, who is typically displayed Saint holding Denis. his own head. When the revolutionaries wanted to make a flag, they didn't want to just use the blue and red for the Paris flag, but they wanted to add the royal white in between them to imply the submission of the monarchy under the people as a way to nationalize the revolution. Since 1794, the flag kind of stuck, <laughs> except for those weird years when Napoleon Maybe was not. exiled twice and the Bourbons tried to make a comeback, and then the July Revolution of 1830 happened, and then it came back since then. Henry, Count of Chambord, one of the last descendants of the royal family, almost tried to change the flag as he almost became the king, but then it was too late and it was over. He, he didn't have a chance. Now, France technically has two unofficial Liberté, national emblems égalité, that were adopted in the early 20th fraternité. century. Both of them contain fasces, however, one is all golden, surrounded by leaves. The with symbol a of fascism makes sense. <laughs> on top of each hey, it's Louis Vuitton. The Republic of France. And the second is similar, however, placed on a blue facade, surrounded by a highly detailed golden chain relic with golden discs, all tied at the bottom by three wreaths of laurel and oak. Now keep in mind, they had a lot of flag and emblem switches ever since the Frankish kingdom. However, blue, white, and the fleur-de-lis are typically portrayed in 
a lot of them. Fun little side note, although the Dutch already had a horizontal tricolor of red, white, and blue, it's disputed that the French were the first ones to do a vertical configuration, which would then influence flags all over the world to follow the same format. So that's about it. I mean, yeah, there's I a ton of other underlying tidbits here and there, but overall, France's symbolism points America. to a country that has moved into an era of progress and revolution. This has been Flag Friday. You've just been flagged. Stay cool, stay tuned. Okay, c'est ça. Et au revoir.